Hi, my name is Stephen Trunick. And I'm Joshua Foster. And today we're going to be uh, doing a presentation on personal area networks. Some of the basics of personal area networks. Basic idea of a personal area network would be the interconnection of information technology devices within your person. Typically the range of about 10 meters. Some of the examples would be a laptop with a wireless keyboard, some video game controllers, and cell phones with wireless headphones. So the basic history of personal area networks, um, since it's such a recent technology, it's uh, still in progress. Uh, like I said, it has a very short history. Um, it started out as a byproduct of existing sensor technology and the term personal area network was first coined in 2006. Some of the applications of personal area networks are you can have wired and wireless connections. Wired connections are being phased out as we speak in favor of wireless connection obviously because you don't have to have wires it's just a easier way to to use Bluetooth or any other personal area network. Uh, speaking further on wired personal area networks, um, wired USB and fireware are often used to link these devices together uh, into a wired connection and like we said today in today's world uh, these type of connections are kind of going obsolete because it's just a hassle to deal with. The implementation of a personal area network is pretty simple. The devices of the network enter a wired or wireless connection. We're going to talk about the wireless connection with, by the personal area network. Um, some examples of current personal area networks, and these are all the wireless features, uh, Bluetooth, RFID, smartphones, smartwatches, uh, Google Glass, which is a newer one, and wireless computer accessories. And these aren't just the current ones. There's many more that uh, we could talk about as well. Bluetooth technology. This is the main standard used for most personal area network wireless personal area networks in today's market. Many of the applications include communication between a mobile phone and a hands-free headset. It's probably the most common one. Wireless control speakers through iPhones or Android phones. You can use your GPS using Bluetooth. You can also have wireless streaming of audio to headphones or any other kind of speaker. Um, Zigbee, it also came about during Bluetooth. It's a IEEE 802.15.4. Uh, it's, it's used to create personal area networks such as Bluetooth um, with small low digital radio frequencies. Uh, it's one of the global standards of communication protocols and it uh, gives des developers uh, specif specifications for uh, devices if they want to create a personal area network. Here we have radio frequency identification, commonly known as RFID. It's mainly used in retail and manufacturing facilities to streamline and make processes simpler and easier. It provides information about the product or material, whether you're shipping, buying, or selling. It's an easy way for manufacturers and other people in business to, man to manage their inventory and things like that. Uh, wireless USB, uh, that's a short range high bandwidth uh, wireless communications protocol. It's got many applications, but it's typically used in uh, game controllers, printers, scanners, cameras, media players, hard drives, and USB drives. Here we have wireless computer accessories. Many times when people get a, a laptop or a pad or a tablet of some sort, 
they don't want to use the touch screen, so you just go get a wireless keyboard or wireless mouse, and it helps make it just like a big computer. It's one of the most important applications for a computer. Uh, video game consoles, uh, much like computer accessories, uh, many uh, video games today have personal area network applications. Uh, some of these applications uh, primarily include uh, controllers for the console, uh, stereo systems that can connect to the console wirelessly, uh, streamed video, and uh, even voice commands. Here we have smartphones. This is perhaps the most common way people in today's society are using personal area networks. Combines the features of personal computing operating system with many other features such as GPS, personal area networks, and high bandwidth internet. First smartphones used a touchscreen were produced by Apple, say iPhone 1, and that was in 2007. Speaking off of smartphones, uh, recent technology has been smart watches. Uh, basically, it's a computerized wristwatch that has the same applications that you'd expect on a smartphone, but on your wrist, obviously. Uh, they run much of the same apps and can do pretty much the same functions as your smartphone could. Uh, the first one was introduced as early as 1994, but it's uh, recently gained back popularity. Here we have the Google Glass. It was developed by Google. This is a it attempts to uh, offer the user a computerized interface, kind of like a heads-up display, if you will, by wearing standard eyeglasses with lenses replaced by the HUD, or heads-up display. Current reports suggest that Google Glass was being redesigned by the former app Apple executive, Tony Fidel, and that would not be released until it was seamless and perfect. Uh... In looking into the future of personal area networks, uh, here are some of the three common things that we found. Uh, the Oculus Rift, uh, there's applications in medicine, and there's even personal area networks uh, being integrated into sports. Here we have the Oculus Rift. It's a wireless binocular-like headset able to give the user a sense of virtual reality. It has many applications. Facebook bought the technology in late 2012. Plans for some of the use of the technology include video games, obviously, will be a, a huge one, and video communication with schools, meetings, all kinds of business applications, and touring. The release for this is set in the first quarter of 2016. Um, in medicine, there's talks of the internal net, or internal net, what that is is a computer network composed of devices uh, that are inside and on the human body. Uh, such a system could be used to link uh, nanochondria, uh, some implants, and uh, many other devices. Here we have some of the smart sports we're going to cover. This is the Bobolot Play Pure Drive. It's a smart tennis racket. It looks and feels just like a normal racket, except one thing. It has sensors in the handle that allow the user to measure many aspects of their tennis performance, such as power, impact location, and type, and number of strokes. The battery allows up to six hours of playing, while the memory you can have 150 hours of information gathering. Here we have a smart golf club. Uh, it has sensors integrated into it to uh, trace the exact pattern of your swing and can help golf golfers master their swing torque and uh, just their general performance. Here we have smart speakers. This picture is an example of the Nike Plus shoe. It allows athletes to measure many types of performance data such as jump, quickness, and oomph during the game. Uh, we decided to cover the topic of Internet of Things and personal area networks and some of the things below, marketing implications, IPv6, and data all have to deal with that. 
In business, business owners can use personal area networks to connect many devices and obviously without wires. We have RFID scanners, tracking of assets, and GPS delivery. In relation to IPv6, the personal area network devices have to be able to uh, run on the new IPv6 and to do that, manufacturers of the future uh, must create the necessary technology to do this. Data controls. Who can use the data collected by personal area networks? It's a topic that will be discussed by many government officials and undoubtedly there will be many new legislation on this on this material. Who owns data shared over personal area networks? Typically the owner of the device is in control um, unless the network is public, for example at a coffee shop. Uh, but since uh, personal area networks operate under very private and secluded environments, um, also at short ranges, usually it's at the owner's discretion. What is the data used for? This is also a topic of future legislation. Unless it's publicly available through use of outside networks, it should belong to the user. What data is being given by us? Since personal area network devices are relatively private, um, there's no data being given unless it is unprotected, um, in which case uh, the data can be used without the user's consent or discretion. Securities of personal area networks. If it's not secure, then other users can control the device, the device that you have connected. Some policies and implications currently, the IEEE 802.15.4, basically a standard which specifies the physical layer of access control for uh, low rate wireless personal area networks. Some of the issues with PANS, it's a short distance of connection which can limit your connectivity depending on how far away you are. Some of the battery life of some of the devices may be low and they have to be adaptable to future networks. Uh, some of the usefulness aspects of the personal area networks. Uh, user has complete control over the network. Um, it's great for customization. Wireless technologies are being seen every day as more convenient. And there's countless number of ap applications that haven't been developed yet. In conclusion, personal area networks are still a technology in progress and they're evolving rapidly. Some of the current technologies are mainly for communication and entertainment. The future of personal area networks aim to enhance these applications and to be used in other fields such as medicine and sports. We appreciate you taking the time to look through this presentation and we really hope that you learned something today.